Hello, welcome. Today we are talking about a cheap wireless in-ear monitor system, the Anleon S2. This is the new model, the second generation. Uh, we're going to do a full review on this thing, covering everything you can think of, and we have very good news about the limiter in this, so stay tuned. Okay, so as we go along today, we're going to be doing a little bit of comparisons with the old one as well. Uh, for those of you that already have that and might want to upgrade like I've done, um, it is worth doing, uh, as you'll see as we go through. Um, but let's start at the beginning. What do you get? Well, you get a transmitter that goes around this way. Uh, you get a belt pack. Uh, you get a cardboard box which is awesome because I've got to send it in something. I'm going to try not to drop all this. Put that down there. So basically you get a cardboard box, um, you get some cheapo earbuds with some spare uh, foamy bits. You can plug your own earbuds into this. Um, so don't worry about these. Uh, I haven't actually plugged these ones in yet. They don't have ear hooks on them, uh, which which I don't like. Uh, the old ones came with ones with ear hooks, which I do like because ones without ear hooks don't stay in my ears. But I'm not going to use them anyway because I'm going to use my KZs uh, instead because they're better. And you get a power supply, which also comes in another cardboard box. Um, so uh, power supplies, you can ask them for which power supply you want. Uh, this is the US plug, I believe. Um, there's UK or, um, what have we got? UK CN, I'm guessing that's Canada. Uh, do you guys have different plugs from US? I don't know. Um, I haven't been over there. Uh, and then AU is like Australasia. That's like New Zealand and Aussie, which is us. Not Aussie when you do it. Um, cool, so that's what you get. Um, so let's start with the belt pack. Uh, very much, well, basically identical to the old one, except uh, that it's got a longer aerial. Okay, so uh, find the old one here. With, well, this aerial's had a hard time. <laughs> okay, so you can see there's Quite a bit of difference in that aerial length. Doesn't help that I've like smashed this one quite a bit. Um, but this this one still works, man. By the way, uh, this is the one you may have seen in one of the other reviews uh, that I yeah I smashed this aerial off. Uh, but the aerials actually have a steel wire rope going up the middle, um, and I just broke the plastic outer off the outside, which is why it's just taped up. Still works, man. I also dropped this in the toilet fully submerged in the toilet, took it out, um, threw it in the hot water cupboard and it um, dried out and worked perfectly fine and has been working for quite some time since. Okay, so my main reason for upgrading was because of the limiter in this one. And you may have heard about it, uh, the limiter in this has got a slow release on it. So when the limiter goes off, it, it might cut out for like, you know, five five to ten seconds, something like that, which is like really annoying when you want to hear such what's going on and you can't because you're waiting for the limiter to get out of the rope. Okay, they have fixed it. Okay, and we're going to listen to it shortly um, once we go through this little look-see at these. Um, we will have a listen to the limiter and I'll show you how quick the release is on it now. Cool. Um, so you get your little screen there it says welcome when you turn it on that's really nice uh, there's a battery meter tell you how much battery you've got uh, channel what channel you're on uh, this little aerial thing will come up with bars to say how good your signal is there's none at the moment because the transmitter's not turned on uh, this one is in the 500 megahertz range. Um, I'll give you a list of all the actual um, 
frequencies at the end of the video. Uh, so this is available in a 500 range and a 600 range. Most of you are going to be in the US and you need this unit which is in the 500 range. So uh, Amazon link below, uh, if you click on that when you want to purchase this unit, uh, that will take you through to this 500 megahertz range and that's because you guys are going away from the 600 range which we aren't doing here in New Zealand um, and the 600 range for us here happens to work a little bit better. Um, so I've actually got one of those on the way as well. Um, but this is the one you guys need. Okay, uh, if you're in the UK, uh, look up your laws and make sure you get the right one. Your guys' laws are quite complicated. You go get licenses and stuff. It's kind of weird. I had a quick look at it. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, so you get six channels and you push the button on the side and it will flick through those channels. Okay, um, and you'll see a little red light on top. That means that we are not connected to our transmitter, that we're not getting signal from it. Uh, that will go green when you're on the right channel, everything's connected, okay? Um, which is a handy little tool uh, for if things go wrong, if you accidentally somehow bump that button or something. Um, or like what happened to me once, somebody kicked the power supply out of the transmitter. When I looked down at my belt pack, I saw a red light. I knew that something was going wrong, that I wasn't getting a signal from there, and I was able to go and fix it. Cool, uh, so that's the belt pack, they're pretty solid. Nice metal clip on the back. Um, like I said last time, these are these are very similar to the Shaw um, type belt packs. Uh, very similar construction, I think. Cool, nice and durable. I don't suggest dropping it in the toilet, but you know, don't freak out, it'll, it'll still work, but you do have to stick your hand in to get it out. Wash your hands. I know I did, a lot. Okay, and the transmitter. Okay, this is um, slightly different construction, I think a little bit more solid than last time. Okay, uh, it's got a proper um, screw-in aerial. We've now got two inputs on the back, very good point, um, very important point about those when you are connecting, you need to use both of them. Okay, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, that is where our power supply goes in. Now on the front we now have a headphone jack. That means you can plug headphones into this unit and listen to what's going through it. Um, so if you were a sound guy or something and you were trying to fault fine or you were trying to listen to somebody's in mix, you could do that here, here, and that one. Okay, um, on off button this side, this is a stereo mono button we will talk about shortly also. Okay, this volume control here, that's not actually the volume control for what you were sending, that's actually just a volume control for the headphone jack. Okay, um, so that's to turn the volume up and down for this headphone jack. Cool? Um, just so you know that that is not going to affect uh, the volume that you're sending to the belt pack. Okay, now connecting this. Um, I've seen a lot of sort of people online saying um, about music sounding distant and hardly being able to hear the vocal. Now the reason for that is because they're only connecting one side here. Okay, so you need to connect both sides and we'll have a little look at the cables, the types of cables that you can use for that, depending on your mixer. Um, but if you only connect to one side, you're actually running mono into the unit. Now if you're listening to a, a track, um, you know, like a CD track or something, um, you will find that it will sound very strange and you'll lose a lot of the vocal part and it will sound distance and that's uh, because of the way that the music is actually recorded in the studio when you split that into mono that's kind of the effect it has cool um, so we'll grab a couple of cables and show you what we can do okay so the first type of cable we've got is a stereo jack at one end 
Okay, and you can tell it's stereo because it's tip ring sleeve, or it's got two black lines on it. Okay, that splits into two monos, okay, which are just tip and sleeve, or one black line. Cool. So what we need to do is come out of the mixer with this one, and then plug one of these into each side. Cool, so we've got two going in there. Uh, you could use two of your desk channels to send um, and just run straight mono, basically guitar cables, in there. This will also take XLR cable. So you could do the same thing with XLR, just run two individual ones from two different channels. The benefit of doing that is then you can get really fancy with your in-ear mix and you can mix different instruments into your left ear and your right ear. Okay, so a lot of guys do that. So say the guitarist is over here on my left, um, then have the guitarist in my left, but the keyboard is on my right, have the keyboard over there and it gives you a bit of perspective. Um, I don't generally do that, I just chuck it all in. To be honest, I know most of the time I only have one in the air in anyway. Cool, so this is the same thing, but with the XLR cable. Okay, so I've actually made this cable myself, um, my nice tape work there, uh, but I've just, yeah, basically made this cable up from scratch because my outputs on my mixer are XLR. Um, so I've done that. I like XLR because it's a balance signal and it's they clip in so they can't fall out or anything. You've got to push the button to get them out, which I like. Cool. Um, so that is connecting up. The other thing I have seen um, said about this is that it lacks volume. Uh, when you get one of these, you'll realize that is the most ridiculous thing. Um, this, this is way, way more grunty than the old model. Um, we'll just compare this, actually, this transmitter while we're there. Transmitter is slightly bigger. Okay, so this is the old model. Uh, I think it was slightly longer, is it? Oh, it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same size. Okay, um, but you see this old one, you just got like this one plug. Um, you got this kind of rangy aerial that I've bent in half in my travels. Still works mint. Um, on switch and a channel switch. It's even upside down. Actually goes up that way, like that. So that's the old one. Forget about the old. This is the new one. Cool. So now this, um, what was I saying? The volume. Yeah, volume. Way louder than that one. Um, which you'll see soon. We're going to do the limiter test. Uh, and on this one, it's I can actually get the limiter to go off by cranking the volume on an electric drum kit, which we, is what we're going to do. Um, I can't actually do it on the other one, but the limiter does go off on the old one right when you don't want it to. Okay, uh, moving on. Stereo mono switch. Now what that is going to do, if I have that switch to stereo, it's going to keep these as left and right. Okay, so what goes in the left is going to go to my left ear. What goes in the right is going to go to the right ear whatever that is. If I'm using a splitter cable, then that's going to be sort of a mix of both. If I'm using two individual channels and mixing individually, that's what I'm going to get. If I switch that over to mono, what that is now going to do is still needs these two inputs, but all it's going to do is it's going to blend them together. Okay, so kind of the same thing as what our splitter cable is already doing, um, but it is going to mix them together uh, and send an even amount to both ears. Cool, just so you understand the stereo and mono switch even though we need to plug in and stereo whatever we do. Okay, cool, so that, that's just an important point for when you get this, otherwise you'll think it doesn't work properly, but it does. you just got to connect it right. Cool, so let's plug it in 
and we'll check out the limiter first uh, and then we'll get into some range tests. Okay, uh, so what's going to happen now, um, I'm going to play a little bit of a track. Sorry, I'm kind of tucked in the corner of my studio here. Um, and Mike's got baby clothes and everything in here. Um, so uh, I'm just going to play a track. I'm not going to be able to hear it, but I'm just going to randomly hit a crash cymbal on this electric drum kit, which I have cranked the gain up on, um, just so it's going to set the, the limiter off, uh, so you'll hear how quickly it goes off, how quickly it comes back. Cool, so that's that's what the problem was with the old one, long release on the limiter. That was the only thing that was wrong with it. Uh, and this is the fix. So let's have a listen. So that is the limiter. The limiter um, is a good thing. Uh, there's something that we need to uh, express is that having a limiter is a good thing because what that means is if you're on stage and somebody drops a microphone or something like that, there's going to be this sudden spike in noise. Um, the limiter is going to be what cuts that off and saves your ears. Um, but now what we have is a much shorter release. Uh, than what we had on the old model, which which is very good news. It means you're not missing this whole chunk after that thing goes off. Um, so if you needed any reason to upgrade from the old model, there it is. The limiter is good. Okay. Um, the one thing we didn't talk about on the belt pack is the batteries. The batteries just slide in the side. Uh, you're going to want to get yourself some rechargeable batteries because uh, if you're using generic ones, you're just going to you're going to chew through them. Um, the rechargeable ones last ages. Um, I hardly ever have to hardly ever have to charge them. No, you got to charge them, but um, probably I probably charge mine like once a month, and I use this thing like most weekends and during the week. Um, but I do keep two pairs of rechargeables which I cycle through as well um, but yeah you do get a decent amount of time out of the rechargeables just you don't want to keep buying batteries um, using generic things so that's it in the side there is just two clips on there that you just push together and it slides out and it just clips back in nice and easy Next up, we are going to do some range tests. The, the reason I have that plural is because we're going to do the two tests that we did last time. Um, so we are going to do the straight line test, uh, which I do out here in the country where I live. Um, and the only reason I do it out here is because you can see the straight line of how far we're going. But don't worry because straight afterwards we are going to do the in-town test in the actual venue where I use this thing regularly um, and see how far we can go in town. Uh, last time it was fairly much the same distance, um, but I know that people were concerned with being out here in the country that you don't have the same stuff going on, you know, with cell phones and all of that. Yada, yada, yada. Um, so we're going to do it in town after we do it out here so you can see the straight line. So range tests, let's go. Thank you. 
Okay, so that was our range tests, um, both out here in the country in a straight line, sort of straight line. Um, I can walk around the driveway a bit, but um, yeah, uh, if you saw the old review of the original unit, it actually went further than this one does, uh, which I was a bit surprised about because I thought that this new unit would, um, would be new and improved in that. Uh, so... Out of everything in this new unit, this is probably the thing that lets it down a little bit, is that the range is not as great. Uh, still works perfectly fine in a small venue, uh, but if you're in a really big venue, like if you're going to be doing stadiums and stuff, well, if you're going to be doing stadiums, you probably don't need a cheap one of these, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, if, like even if you're in like a really big church um, and your sound desk is a long way away from your stage, uh, maybe look at something else because um, this might just not make it would be interesting to see actually for America if that's different though um, yeah just with what's going on in the atmosphere and that sort of thing uh, you'll notice in those two that sometimes there was a little bit of background noise um, worse in the venue than here at home but the the thing that my house and the venue have in common is bad earthing in the building, um, guitars, everything picks it up, even bass, uh, they pick it up through the pickups, feed it through the amps, all of our in-the-air loops always have hum in them um, until everything starts. So uh, I use this on stage, the stage you would have seen in the venue, you would have seen that distance. I use this without any issues all the time. Um, it doesn't cut out on me. Occasionally when the limiter does go off, it'll cut out for that 
that short amount of time that you saw in the limiter test. Uh, but that background noise is only there until the stuff gets started. It's only there while there's no other noise, if you will, which I kind of like sometimes because I've gotten used to that over the years with uh, in-ear units um, so that when that noise is there, you know that they're working. You know, oh, I'm getting signal feed. Cool. Great. Um, but yeah, once the track starts, band starts, everything starts, then it's fine. I will say, because um, I had a comment actually on my old review that somebody bought this and that they can't hear this and that, and they, they said that they can't get enough volume out of it to hear everything properly, and then when they try and turn it up at clips, I think that they're doing something wrong, I've got to say that, because uh, I can hear everything clearly, and I, and I have a pretty full mix going on uh, in my in-ears, because I like to hear everything, so I've got keyboard, acoustic guitar, um, bass, when I'm playing bass, well, even if I'm not playing, I've still got the bass in there, because I want to hear that, electric guitar, if it's there, I want to hear that, I've got um, anything up to four or five vocals going on, I've got an MD mic, uh, which is the guy, um, normally the guy playing the keyboard, uh, telling telling us, you know, what our next move is and that sort of thing, so he's speaking to us, and then we've got the drum kit, and I've got kick and snare, and uh, I normally just run kick, snare, and overhead, to be honest, um, yeah, I don't worry about getting into individual toms and all that, because I'm standing right next to the drummer, so I can hear him anyway. Um, but yeah, I can hear everything clearly, uh, and the other thing to look at is actually what earbuds you're using, or the actual in-ears, um, and whether they're actually up to scratch. But anyway, uh, for a cheap unit, so this is currently on Amazon for $129. US dollars. Um, for a cheap unit, it definitely does the job. my computer up so it starts um, yeah so for a cheap unit it definitely does the job uh, yeah you can spend more and get something else if you click the link below in the description it'll take you over to Amazon uh, it'll show you the 500 megahertz unit um, what I'll do is right after this I'll roll through a screen and I'll show you the frequencies that are on the 500 megahertz range and on the 600 megahertz range there are both available remember in the US you need the 500 cool so we're linking you to that page uh, you can have a look around some of the other units while you're there um, there are some that I can't get shipped here to New Zealand um, but that you guys can get some, get in the States they are a little bit more expensive but yeah have a look see what you think um, yeah, I, in the reviews of these online, I haven't seen a whole lot of stuff about um, the range on it, but for me it was a lot shorter. Uh, so big shout out to the guys at Deep Deal on Amazon. Um, have been trying to actually sort it out for me. Um, they've now sent me two transmitters uh, on the 500 megahertz range, thinking that maybe there was a problem, that it wasn't going as far. Um, and then they sent me the 600 megahertz range unit to see if that would make it better because of where I am, whether it's something to do with the country. Um, but generally, I, I think it's just it just doesn't go as far, which, like I say, is fine in a small unit. The other thing you can do is because the aerials on the transmitter are removable, uh, you can upgrade that. So I'll just show you that real quick. So this is a unit here where I've actually put a bigger aerial on. Uh, let's grab a standard one. So this aerial is actually removable now. This is the first one that I, I thought the aerial was the problem with because it rattles. Um, and that's why they sent me a new transmitter. Uh, but that wasn't the problem. Okay, so because that unscrews, all we need is a fitting to screw in there uh, that has one of these connectors on it. When I can undo that, which way am I going? That way. Okay, so all we need is a little one of these. 
um, that goes from that mini UHF uh, to a, like a bayonet type fitting. I think it's called, uh, what was it called? Um, BNC or something like that. Uh, that takes a standard aerial fitting. Okay, aerial antenna, sorry. Um, so this is actually of a Line 6 microphone unit. Um, it's just a it's just a bit of a bigger aerial. Um, I just happen to have a dead Line 6 microphone unit um, lying around. So I just pinch this aerial off it, put a connector in. Uh, it makes it a little bit better, but not huge. I suppose if, if you had a real flash aerial, you might make it a lot better, I suppose. You could try it. Um, but anyway, that is something that you can try. Cool. Uh, so let's look at some frequencies. I hope this has helped you out today. Remember to click the like uh, because this is the new unit that we're reviewing today. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to get people to see this video um, when they're searching rather than the old video. So if you click like on this one and uh, yeah, click subscribe while you're there too. I do all sorts of music stuff, guitar, bass, tutorials, uh, and gear reviews. So yeah, check it out. But otherwise, we'll see you next time.